بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وآله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Tafsir class Inshallah we'll continue what we started yesterday about fasting and uh, we will we reached ayah 187 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أحل لكم ليلة الصيام الرفث إلى نسائكم هن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن علم الله أنكم كنتم تختانون أنفسكم فتاب عليكم وعفى عنكم فالآن باشروهن وابتغوا ما كتب الله لكم It is made lawful for you to have sexual relations with your wives on the night of fasting What does that tell you? It is made lawful for you to have sexual relations with your wives on the night of fasting Maybe it was unlawful before. How? Like, tell me, tell me the process. Notice, as I told you yesterday, that mandating fasting came through several steps. The first step, it was optional. You can fast. If you don't want to fast, you pay for the poor and you break your fast. Then, this thing, how this happened? Or, what do you understand from this? Yeah, the previous step. So for, for 30 days, for entire month, you cannot approach your wife. Khalil, what do you think? What do you think? If that's the case, that would be very difficult. That's not what the ayah says. Maybe they, they, they kept away out of fear. That was, this was part of it. No, if they kept away out of fear, it doesn't say unlawful. Go ahead. Uh, maybe some of the Sahabas, they kept away out of fear, one. Mm -hmm. And they, they had relations with their wives. And for this time, they came and, you know, they were wondering what the last one do you agree on this falsehood? Yeah. Yeah, if they used to do it and it was deception, that means it was not lawful. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now it was made lawful. So what was the process exactly? Here is what happened. When fasting was mandated and it was optional, then it was mandatory, when it became mandatory, they were allowed to break their fast and eat, drink, have sexual relations as long as they are awake. Once they sleep in the night, if they woke up again, even though it is still night, they cannot eat or drink, nor have any sexual relation. Okay, so let's say the breaking of the fast, the sunset is at 6 p.m., they broke their fast at 6 p.m. They kept awake until 8 o'clock. They prayed Aisha and Taraweeh, and then they slept at 9 o'clock. If they woke at 3 a.m., still they have like 4 hours or 3 hours for subh prayer, they cannot eat. So it was almost one-time food. Because even when they returned from Taraweeh, unlike nowadays we have, mashallah, meals ready, they did not have that much food. So it was only one, like almost one meal. And that was the only time where if you wanted to have any sexual relations, that's the only time. After that, you cannot. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here. This is the second step. It is made lawful for you to have sexual relations with your wives on the night of fasting. So as long as it, as it is night, can you have sexual relation? Yes. They are body cover for you and you are body cover for them. Or in another uh, translation, screen. What do you understand from this? They will help what? Curb your desire. Control your desire. How? 
what's, what's the relation between this and the ayah, the term used, body cover? It's a, probably a figurative way mm -hmm. of you know, saying that, that you will be able to, by satisfying your desires okay. in a halal way, okay. this will help prevent you from committing sins. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with saying body cover. What does body cover mean? Yes. Hurry up. No. You forgot. So, <laughs> protection. Exactly. Maybe that's what you meant. Body cover. What's the use of your garment? To protect the body. Exactly. You see, it is protection from cold or hot weather. So the same thing, your wife is protection for you. Once you fulfill your desire, it's protection from haram. It's beautifying. So the same thing, your, your wife beautifies you, you beautify her. It is a literal cover-up. You cover. Now this, when we wear our garments, we cover our shortcomings, deficiencies. So the same thing, your wife should cover your shortcomings. And you should also cover her shortcomings. See, all these meanings are implied in this beautiful term. عُنَّ لِبَاسُ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسُ لَهُمْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ Allah knows that you used to deceive yourselves. عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَنُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَعَفَ عَنْكُمْ So he turned to you and forgave you. So now, have sexual relations with them and seek that which Allah has ordained for you. Seek that which Allah has ordained for you. What did Allah ordain for us? What do we seek? From the sexual relation, what do you seek? Hmm? Righteous offspring, children, satisfy yourself. And eat and drink. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطُ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ and eat and drink until the white thread of dawn appears to you distinct from the black thread. Then complete your fast till the nightfall. ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ Now that, the per, here comes the per, permission to, to eat and drink. Again, as I told you at the beginning, it was only one time or as long as you are awake. But here Allah says, eat and drink until the white thread of dawn appears to you distinct from the black thread. What does that mean? What does that mean? Anas radiallahu an, he took a pillow and he put underneath the pillow white thread and black thread. And he kept on eating until he was able to distinguish between the black thread and the white thread. But he came to the Messenger وسلم, and he told him, I was unable to distinguish until it was, it was day. So the Prophet وسلم, told him, then your pillow is very wide. Because that's not the meaning. The white thread is a figure for the advent of the day, the dawn. And the black thread is the night. So it tells you, you eat and drink and you have sexual relations until dawn. And then you start fasting. Until when? The nightfall. Okay, this ayah, there are many rulings here. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us we can eat and drink and have sexual relations until dawn. What does that mean? Or what do we learn from this? Can you extract few benefits from this? Fine, I'll give you an example. Can someone start fasting while he is junub? Why?
Well, that means he can take shower while he's fasting. He was state of Janaba. We don't need the hadith because it is here in the ayah. If Allah tells us that we are allowed to have sexual relations until dawn, and someone stopped exactly at dawn, did he do anything haram? What does that imply? If you stop at dawn, will you be automatically washed or you have to wash your body? So once you wash, that means what started now? The time of fasting started. So that implies that it is permissible to start fasting in the state of Janaba because of the ayah. See how, that's how scholars derive the rulings. What else? What can you learn? Can you eat and drink until dawn? Or you have to stop five minutes earlier or ten minutes earlier? Until dawn, why? That's what the ayah says. So from this ayah you learn that there is no essence for what they call the adhan of imsak. They used to have like calendars and with them, before dawn, like ten minutes, they tell you this is the time of imsak where you have to stop. You don't have to. This is bid'ah, actually. <laughs> you can No, not the adhan. But the time where you cannot eat or drink. Because it says in the ayah clearly, until dawn. It also implies, what if someone was eating and drinking and at the exact dawn time he stopped? There is food or drink in his mouth. What does he do? Complete. Isn't he considered not fasting? He started before dawn. But he did not finish. But did he start after dawn? No. So that implies if there is a, a bite in your mouth, you complete it. That's also implied. Again, it tells you what's the time for fasting. What time of fasting from the ayah? From dawn, from dawn until sunset, nightfall. And do not have sexual relations with them while you are in i'tikaf in the masjids. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ What do we learn? Many lessons, again. During Atikaf, you cannot have sexual relations. That's only one. And that's what most of the people will think of. But there are many. Where do you do Atikaf? In the masjid. That's what it says. Now here's the question. Can you do Atikaf in Musalla? Well, what's the difference between Musalla and Masjid? Musalla usually you don't pray five times. So let's say this Musalla you pray three times a day. Can you do Atikaf there? First, if you do it in Musalla, whether you will miss Salat al-Jama'ah, because there is only three prayers, or you will go and you will keep going back and forth. So you cannot do it because it has to be in the masjid. What else? We derive from the ayah. When do we do atikaf? Hmm? Does it say last 10 days of Ramadan? No. So when do we do atikaf? In Ramadan. In Ramadan. Why? The ayah does not say anything about Ramadan. But again, the context, it's mentioned in the fasting and in Ramadan. So this implies that the best time for atikaf in Ramadan. Some scholars said the only time of atikaf is in Ramadan. Again, all of them, they, they get this evidence from the ayah. See, that's really important. That's the purpose of studying tafsir. That's how you learn. You need to have this, this talent. How can you derive the rulings from the ayah? These are the limits by Allah.
So approach them not. Again, approach them not. What does that imply? Approach them not. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say do not do them? Yes. Exactly. Do not be engaged in things that will lead you to this. And that's more strict than saying do not do them. Just like when they tell you no entry. You have the gate and you are walking around. No one could come and say why you are here. Because you did not do anything wrong. It says no entry. I did not enter. But <coughs> when you have a sign and it says do not approach. Is it a different or is it the same? It's different. Do not approach means that even if you are if you are around, they will catch you. So the same thing. Do not do anything that will cause you to fall in these things. Yes. Does the same rule apply to women that they can make itikaf in the masjid? Or there is where their itikaf is made? From the ayah, yes. There is no distinction. Yes. Thus does Allah make clear his ayat to mankind that they may acquire piety. How you acquire piety? From the ayah. By not approaching the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the ayah implies. Again, why fasting was prescribed on us? That you may acquire piety. Here, that you may acquire piety. And the third ayah. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ You may be grateful. What do you want? Okay. The next ayah. And eat up not one another's property unjustly. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ Nor give bribery to the rulers that you may knowingly eat up a part of the property of others sinfully. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتُدْلُوا بِهَا إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ لِتَأْكُلُوا فَرِيقًا مِنْ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْإِثْمِ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ First, what's the relation between this ayah and fasting? This ayah is talking about money, right? Or it's talking about food, eat up. What do you think? Khalil? Any relation between this ayah and the previous ayah? About fasting? Hello? Online? They're quiet? Give me one, all of them. Is there anyone absent? Okay. The previous ayat are talking about what? Fasting. When, when we fast, what do we do? What do we do? You are fasting. You are doing what? Hmm? From food and drink. You are not eating and drinking. Food and drink in general is allowed or prohibited? It is allowed. So it is temporarily prohibited. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is moved to something which is permanently prohibited. See how the sequence of the ayat? First, things that are prohibited temporarily. Now, things are prohibited permanently. Eat up not one another's property unjustly. And actually, there is mistranslation. Because in the Arabic text, it says, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ And eat up not your money unjustly. So he gave the example that the money of your brother is just like your money. But in the translation, they said one another's property. 
nor give bribery to the rulers. Isn't it good to bribe the rulers? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the rulers here in particular? Can't you bribe employee? The ayah mentioned the rulers, so that means I can bribe simple employee, not a ruler. No, that's not what it says. Why the ruler is mentioned here in particular? Again, all these questions, you should answer them. Yes. How you get things done? You go to the people of power and you bribe them. So Allah is reminding you, even if you were able to do that, you use the power. And again, if you use the power, the other party cannot confront you. And you will do injustice. Now, even if that's the case, do not do it. That's why the rulers are mentioned. Do not think that if you are able to do it, then it will become halal. Do not think if the judge gave the ruling in your favor, it became halal. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that, that you come to me, you're disputing, and you are different. Some of you are more eloquent than others. And I judge according to what I hear. So do not take what I give you unjustly, if you know it's not yours, for it is a piece of fire. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. So this is a reminder. Do not say, oh, I am stronger, I can take it, so I will do. Being able to does not mean you have to do it. Do not do it. They ask you about crescents. Say, قل, again, remember, every time the Prophet ﷺ was asked in the Quran, say, قل, except the time where Dua. They ask you concerning me. I am near. These are signs to mark fixed periods of time for mankind and for the pilgrimage. What's the use of crescents? To know the months. Isn't it better to use calculations or fixed times? This month is 30, this month is 31, and then 30. Why do we have to watch for crescents? Why don't we follow the solar year, the Gregorian calendar? Why not? That's the beauty of Islam. You experience ibadah in all different type, times. In, in winter, in summer, the hot weather, the cold weather. Now fasting... Maybe it is a little bit long. It is coming longer. And it's becoming hot in summer. Then it will go shorter. So you experience all that. That's the greatness of Islam. It's not only one time. Because it will not be just. For some people, it will be permanently cold. For other people, it may be permanently hot. So that's the, the beauty of Islam. It is not righteousness that you enter the houses from the back. But righteousness is who have piety. Now, there is a reason for revelation of this ayah. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it is not righteousness that you enter the houses from the back. They had a notion, especially the Ansar, that once they come from pilgrimage, they jump over the walls. They don't go through the door. And they think that this is piety. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told them, that's not piety. So enter houses through their proper doors. If there is something with no essence, do not approve of it. You have to disapprove it. And have piety of Allah that you may be successful. Also, this statement is nice. Enter houses through their proper doors. This is general for everything. You wanted the transaction, do it the proper way. You want to ask question, do it the proper way. 
you wanted to propose to a lady, enter the houses from their proper doors. Do not go behind her parents, behind your parents. or So it is general. Enter houses through proper doors. It's like proverb. No, it's like saying. And have piety of Allah that you may be successful. Who's the successful person? The one who has piety. And fight in the way of Allah those who fight you. But transgress not the limits. Truly Allah likes not the transgressor. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمَعْتَدِينَ This was the first ayah to be revealed for jihad. Again, when was jihad legislated? In Medina. After what? After 13 years of physical abuse, constant abuse. Yet Allah is telling them, transgress not. Allah is not telling them, burn the lands, kill every soul. He is telling them not to transgress. And not only that, Allah says, fight in the way of Allah those who fight you. That requires that there are two parties. You don't initiate. Those who fought you, you fight them. So again, the ayah does not say, kill whoever you want. This is very important to know how jihad was legislated. And we will stop here, inshallah, because the issue of jihad is long, and we will talk about it next week. Is there any questions?